Welcome to another Yorkshire Legends interview where we're joined uh, this week by former Leeds United uh, Rangers Watford and Northern Island star John McClelland. Uh, John, thanks very much for joining us uh, this week. Uh, we'll kick off back. Uh, you were born 7th of December 1955, am I correct, in Belfast. What was it like growing up there? Uh, difficult. Um, as my, f- my father was a Protestant and my mother was a Catholic, wow. and my father came from the Shankill Road. Um, so I, I was brought up. I don't really know any of my father's side of the family because <laughs> they said, "You know, you're gone." Yeah. Um, so I make a joke. Everybody hated us. <laughs> Tr- troubles were bad enough, but nobody liked us. <laughs> so I mean, as, as a young kid growing up, did you always want to be a footballer? No, it's the last thing in your mind because I mean, you watch football. George Best was playing uh, England, obviously, in 1966, won the World Cup, uh, and you're watching them black and white, and it's like you, you can't imagine what you see in television and what you do in boys because there wasn't all this organised football schools boys brigade and it wasn't all these different leagues so it was just uh, you just can't imagine ever um, being a professional footballer and I I never did (laughs) consider I was going to be a professional footballer and growing up as a kid was there opportunities to play football in the street and that sort of thing or was it was it quite I mean a mess I imagine back then the the troubles were flaring up all, all over the place yeah, it was. No, there was only every Sunday, because, again, um, pubs weren't open on a Sunday. Uh, so every Sunday, we had a big park, and the adults used to go down uh, and just play football in a big area. And as kids, we'd just go and watch. And every now and again, they'd let us join in the last 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And my career started, really. Um, there was one adult team, and the guys that played said, oh, you're quite good. Well, it was very skinny. And they said to the manager, this lad should play for us, I was 15. And the manager said, no, no, it's violent. You know, you go to areas where you have 15 minutes to leave and there'd be fights all the time in the games. Mm-hmm. And uh, they'd bring crates of beer to the games and all sorts. And, and the manager said, no, it's too hard. And they said, well, we'll look after him. Just give him a chance. If it's too hard, don't play him, but give him a chance. So uh, the manager took a chance. And uh, a season later, he said, you're far too good for us. And got me a trial at uh, Porter Down. So I went to Porter Down, had a trial at a semi-professional club, and the manager was giving McKenzie, uh, and he was very astute, because he signed me. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> but you all, I mean, you're known as a defender, uh, John, but did you start off as a defender? Or, I mean, you, you mentioned your George Best, was he your idol? Did you fancy yourselves a tricky winger? Not really. My, my team, it was considered a bit strange, because I liked West Ham, the, the, and Billy Bonds. I liked the way Billy Bonds played. But West Ham played <coughs> the sort of total football, and uh, played nice football, never won anything, but I liked the way they played. Everybody in Northern Ireland, like Liverpool, Leeds, Manchester United, and I was considered a bit strange because I liked West Ham, but because I was skinny and small, I played in the wing, I played in midfield, so I wasn't uh, a defender. Um, that, that sort of came later. So you're at Portadown, and then from there you make the, the trip to Wales. How did all that come about? Well, again, the manager played me as a midfielder then. The manager played me in the Irish League games where we were playing the, the, the weaker teams or the passing teams uh, and didn't play me against the Linfield or the Glen Torns. But you don't realise that at the time, you know, you, and obviously you, br- you bring people in now and again. And I said, I was only 16, 17. And uh, <clears throat> I left school at 16 and got a job in Portadown. Um, went to live there. And uh, things were going okay. We worked in the factory, and uh, bad reports kept going back to the manager about me. And I said, uh, and a senior player said to me, "You don't understand what's going on, John, do you?" And I said, "No, what?" He said, "You've walked in off the street, being recommended by your manager not in White Abbey, and I said the reserve manager is paid to bring players to the club." And he said, you're the best player that's come to the club, and he doesn't like it. <laughs> so he kept giving bad reports about me. So even at 16 or 17, I said to the manager, well, 17, I said to the manager, there's no point in me being here. Mm. I said, I keep getting bad reports, and I know I'm not playing bad. Uh, he said, just leave it with me, just leave it with me. I know what's going on. So he was clued up, and about eight weeks later, he sold me to Cardiff. So I got, I got uh, moved on. Um, at 17, so I became professional at 17, never did the apprenticeships. So turning professional, what, what does that feel like as a, as a young kid? Well, again, you leave home. Mm. You, you're, you're leaving home, I mean, across the water for the first time. You're with a lot of strangers, so it's very hard. 
but you don't realise that. You just go and adapt. And uh, as they end up incidentally becoming captain of Glasgow Rangers, the two lads I lodged with, and one was a real Celtic fan and one was a real Rangers fan. And they got on, but there's all this jiving and ribbon going on. Uh, and for me, just to be end up being, uh, I thought it was strange, maybe being a captain of Glasgow Rangers in the end. But it's very hard because you play football to enjoy it, and then it's a job, and you're training every day, and your body goes to pot because you're not used to every day being hounded, pounded like that. So for six or seven months, it's horrendous because your coordination goes and everything goes, and you just got to get through that. Cardiff and then Bangor City as well, which are sort of memories of playing there? Yeah, well, Cardiff was a midfield player in the reserves and then uh, somebody got injured at centre-forward, so I uh, played centre-forward in the reserves and got on the first team at centre-forward when Cardiff were in the second division. Then Cardiff got relegated. Um, I think as we go through a career, see lots of clubs get relegated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they get relegated and all the young players have one-year contracts or 18-month contracts. So I remember there's about 10 of us waiting outside the manager's office to have it to be told and I was the first in and I was younger than the rest having played more games than the rest in the first team and everybody said there's two contracts on the offer you're going to get one of them because you've been in the first team and I was the first in and they said no you, you, you haven't progressed quickly enough uh, you might make it later but at the moment you haven't progressed quickly enough and being naive I said well if you give me a long contract I'll be here when I do progress so he said no it doesn't work like that so um, I went out and the players asked me how, how, how it went and I started crying, I'm crying and I didn't get a contract and they're going you didn't get a contract <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I think they all didn't get contracts um, but I think there's a network of systems where uh, Cardiff knows all the clubs in Wales and it's a bit of not a pyramid system but the scouts all over the place so somebody must have recommended me to Bangor I had a contact in North Wales so I was back in Northern Ireland. Everybody wanted to sign me because I had 18 months of professional training. And I just thought, oh, I'll just leave it and see what happens. Uh, my, mother, my father had died when I was nine. And my, my mother ran a newsagent in a sweet shop. So I just thought I was going to work in the sweet shop and help out in the business. And uh, I got a phone call, Bangor City, want to talk to you. So I flew over to Speak Airport and um, spoke to the chairman, the manager at uh, the airport. So they took me to a nice hotel. You always know when they don't take you to the grind. The grind's a bit of a, 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 a not so well run. Um, I asked for a thousand pounds. I said I've played eight, teams, eight games in the second division. Oh, Part time, we've no money. We'll give you sixteen pound a week and get you a job. Mm. So do you want to? Oh, it's okay. So I signed for sixteen pound a week and um, turned up for pre season training. <laughs> And you're there for a bit, and then uh, Mansfield come come calling. How did how did all that come about? Yeah, uh, again, it was a centre forward at Bangor, uh, scored three goals and four friendlies against league clubs, and never scored for fifteen games. Mm-hmm. The manager was going to sack me, and he got the sack first. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all these little things are strange. Uh, he got the sack first. Uh, the s- assistant manager dropped me because he became the manager, and I went to watch him play in the uh, Welsh Cup. And uh, I'd worked in a fish factory at the time from five in the morning to about three or four in the afternoon. Mm. Uh, went back at fish chips, mushy peas, went down, wished them all the best, put my head in the door, said, Good luck, lads. I think it was 19 or 20. And um, the manager shouting at the centre half. He said, Why didn't you sign your forms to play in the Welsh Cup? And he's shouting at the secretary, How can you miss this? And he looked around, Can anybody play centre half? And I, uh, Yeah, I'll play centre half. I said, when did you last play centre half? John I said, when I was 12. <laughs> and he went clear off. <laughs> <laughs> and he couldn't find anybody else to play centre half and had to play me. And that changed my career. So in a few months, I was captain. Wow. <laughs> and uh, Billy Bingham was at, at Mansfield, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, uh, I managed uh, uh, Captain Bangor. We got through the Welsh Cup final, beat Newport League team, beat Shrewsbury League team, played Wrexham, who were a very good team in the final on two legs. They beat us by the odd goal in each game. And... Um, so the summer came and I suddenly get a phone call we've agreed to sell you mm. and that was a strange story we agreed to sell you I said who wants to buy me we're not allowed to tell you I said but I've got to know where I'm going or no no they wanted a secret because it might leak in the press and their centre half uh, their centre half will be upset that they've tried to replace them so it has to be a secret I said well I've got to know and they said no 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 you've got to go to from Bangor to Chester 
and there's a Queen's Hotel just outside the train station. Go and stand there, and somebody will come and meet wow. you. Oh, wow! So I had to get on a train <laughs> and then about dress the best I could, and uh, stood out, stood in this hotel, and somebody tapped me on the shoulder and said, "I'm the manager of Mansfield Town." And I didn't know where Mansfield was. I'd never got a clue. <laughs> and I'm bluffing. I said, oh, right, OK, OK. I didn't even know what league they were in. I knew they weren't in the top. I knew they weren't in the mm-hmm. second. Um, and uh, Mansfield, I don't know. So they ran me for £10,000. And I thought, you got a percentage of that. So I said, I want £1,000. They said, no. Banger should give you that. A phone banger, I want £1,000. You got me for nothing and you sell me for £10,000. Uh, no, we don't give you that, son. It's called a signing on fee. Mansfield will give you it. So I said to the manager, Mansfield, uh, I want a thousand pound. No, we're not giving you that, son. You know, we can get a free transfer from someone. We're taking a chance on you. And I just bought my first house in North Wales. Mm-hmm. I said it's a big thing to do this, considering what happened at Cardiff. Mm-hmm. I said I need a couple of weeks to think about this. He said you've ten minutes. I'm a busy man. I'm putting my team <laughs> together, and they walked off. <laughs> and they offered me a hundred pound a week. Um, so I, come back. <laughs> so I signed for a hundred pound a week. <laughs> so it was just. No plan, did. no plan, no, no, history, yeah. no sort of thing about it. It's just in those days you could sell your house probably quite quickly. You could sell a property, mm-hmm. you know. So it was, yeah. But I mean, if you imagine that happening in today's football, I mean, it's totally alien, isn't it? The game's totally changed. I mean, that sounds like a secret service operation. That. Well, you're looking back in hindsight, you hear people whinging about the agents. Ninety-five mm-hmm. percent of them do a good job, and I say, don't blame the agents, blame the chairman. Because that was probably happened to lots of players. So if you've been treated badly all the time, you go and get a representative. As a, as a union, if you've been treated badly at work, you get a union started. And because all these players were just being bought and sold like meat and not making any money out of it, and I said, I don't mind making somebody money mm-hmm. as long as I get some of it. So, you know, Bangor, Mansfield, Rangers, but why shouldn't I get some of it? So we weren't getting any of it. So obviously the agents came aboard and it's gone extreme now. But I'm saying, well, if the chairman had it treated us right, there's no need to look for an agent. So they all throw the, the uh, you know, stones at the agents, but that'll be the one or two percent that's doing extreme. Most of them just doing a good job for the, the players. You know, lower down the leagues, you don't hear too much about the agents, do you? That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. And what was it like at, at Mansfield? Because at the club, you earned your first call up to Northern Ireland. That must have been like a ball out of the blue. That. Yeah, again, again, it's the hard training again because now you're part time again, going full time. And I was a utility player, so Billy Bingham was a manager and he used me as a as a spare player. So left back got injured, I played left back. Right got bit injured, I played right back. When they got fit, I was substitute. Played centre forward, played midfield, played winger, and it held me back a little bit. But looking in hindsight, it made me appreciate what sort of path the centre forward wants what movement people don't like or do like so uh, when I established myself at centre back uh, I knew what sort of pass the centre forward wanted to receive and what the centre half didn't like and so it sort of helped me um, looking back but again my career changed because Mansfield got relegated and then the sack Billy Bingham so he wasn't good enough to manage Mansfield and six months later he got the Northern Ireland manager so I got called up unexpectedly because of some injuries for the home international championships so I got a call up uh, and I thought it was a joke to start and I had to fly over the next day and meet up on the Monday to the Clodden Hotel in Bangor mm-hmm. and to walk in and send Pat Jennings is our Arsenal, Jimmy Nickel, Manchester United, Sammy Nelson, Arsenal, Chris Nickel, Southampton, Martin O'Neill, Nottingham Forest, Sammy McElroy, Manchester United, David McCree, Manchester United, Tommy Cassidy, Newcastle and I've got to introduce myself as, as uh, John McClellan, Mansfield Town. <laughs> it, <seemed a> <laughs> it seemed a bit strange. <laughs> And I remember the secretary, David Bourne, picked me up and uh, in, this, in the lunch he sort of said, what's your expenses? And naively said, oh, I don't have any, I'm, I'm just happy to be here. Mm-hmm. And all the players started laughing. <laughs> and I said, what's wrong? I said, you'll learn. <laughs> <laughs> so I learned. <laughs>